I want to talk to you today about a patient I saw recently who had a very common problem in our culture called frozen shoulder. The problem with frozen shoulder is it's what I call a basket category. It's what most practitioners put a problem into when they can't actually work out what the cause of it is. Now let me just show you how frozen shoulder presented with her. When she tried to lift her arm up like this, instead of the shoulder staying here where it does on me, she lifted her arm up like this until about here and then only when she was able to get into a position something like this was she then able to lift the arm up and it only came up to about here when she did. So as soon as I saw that I thought it looks to me as if supraspinatus which is one of the rotator cuff muscles is being impinged upon either by the structure of the shoulder girdle itself um, or possibly some other cause, scalenes or even the nerve that innervates that particular muscle may have been compromised by some structure in the shoulder. So what I asked her to do, I asked her to do a stretch for the external rotators, which are the muscles which stop you putting your arm behind your back like this. And I also did another stretch for middle deltoid and supraspinatus, which is up on the YouTube channel, where we pull the arm behind the body. We did those two first, and then I asked her to practice something that looks a bit like this, where you put the shoulder in, in whatever it is its normal position and you actually use these muscles and the muscles at the back of the shoulder and one underneath the shoulder next to the ribcage here to pull the shoulder down like this. And then I held her hand against her body and while the shoulder was being pulled down I asked her to press her arm out to the side and immediately I could feel there was some real strength in that muscle. Then she moved her shoulder around, turned her head around a few times to relax the neck muscles and so on, and then when she went to lift her arm out to the side, the shoulder stayed down, and the muscle inside the shoulder, called supraspinatus, did the job it's supposed to do. Now how does all this work? Well in the first instance, some 12 months ago or so, she had some massive emotional trauma, and the result for her was an arm that was held in this position because that was the only position it felt comfortable and felt safe in. Now once that arm had been in there for a month or two, all of the normal innovation patterns of the shoulder had been changed by that immobility. Then when she went to lift her arm up, instead of being able to abduct the arm with the correct muscle, supraspinatus, she found she was only able to lift the shoulder up and down with trapezius and levator scapulae possibly as well. So by pulling the shoulder down in this position, once we'd actually freed up the range of movement of the parts of the body involved, by pulling the shoulder down with latissimus dorsi and the other muscles I mentioned before, that action inhibits trapezius. It means that neural innervation of trapezius is reduced momentarily. And as a result, when we ask the body to press the arm out to the side, the only muscle left that could do that job was supraspinatus. And I'm not exaggerating, the entire treatment took about 10 to 12 minutes, I think, maybe 15 minutes at the outside. And by the time she'd done those three exercises, this movement here was able to be done with both arms with perfect freedom and no pain whatsoever. So this, I mean, this is a unique case, of course. Each case is unique and it may not apply to your case of frozen shoulder. But the general rule, I believe, is something like this. If you want something to start working again, you have to do whatever stretching or strengthening exercises are required to regain normal movement patterns. And once you've done that, many things that are regarded as problems in the body can often fix themselves. Try it, your shoulders just might like it.